Hello and welcome to another episode of Scientifically Explained. Let's talk about eyes today. The human eye is an organ that reacts to light and allows vision. One of its parts is known as cornea. So today's video is all about the cornea. What is cornea? The cornea is your eye's clear protective outer layer, along with the sclera which is the white of your eye. It serves as a barrier against dirt, germs, and other things that can cause damage. Your cornea can also filter out some of the sun's ultraviolet light, but not much, so protect your eyes by wearing sunglasses when you're outdoors. Structure To understand what is cornea, you have to understand the structure of cornea. Cornea has three main layers. Epithelium the outermost layer. It stops outside matter from getting into your eye. It also absorbs oxygen and nutrients from tears. Stroma. The middle and thickest layer lies behind the epithelium. It's made up mostly of water and proteins that gives it an elastic but solid form. Endothelium. This is a single layer of cells on the very back of the stroma. The aqueous humor. A clear fluid in the front chamber of your eye. It is in constant contact with this layer. It works like a pump. The stroma absorbs excess liquid and the endothelium pulls it right out. Without this function, the stroma would become waterlogged. Your cornea would get opaque and hazy and so would your vision. As the clear outermost layer of the eye, the cornea's main job is to focus light. The cornea acts as the eye's outermost lens. It functions like a window that controls and focuses the entry of light into the eye and contributes between 65 to 75 percent of the eye's total focusing power. When light strikes the cornea, it bends or refracts the incoming light onto the lens. The lens further refocuses that light onto the retina, a layer of the light sensing cells lining in the back of the eye that starts the translation of light into vision. For you to see clearly, light rays must be focused by the cornea and the lens to fall precisely on the retina. The retina converts the light rays into impulses that are sent through the optic nerve to the brain. The refractive process is similar to the way a camera takes a picture. The cornea and the lens in the eye act as the camera lens. The retina is similar to the film. If the image is not focused properly, the film or retina receives a blurry image. Cornea also has its problems and diseases. Corneal disease is a serious condition that can cause clouding, distortion, scarring, and eventually blindness. There are many types of corneal disease, and one of them is keratoconus. I'm inviting my friend Daisy to explain keratoconus in detail. Hi, I'm Daisy. I'm from at iDaisyShu. Um, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter. And thank you very much. Um, to scientifically explain for inviting me to talk about uh, the cornea and all the different types of diseases that can impact on the cornea. And as we heard previously, the cornea is a very important structure at the front of the eye and it is um, important for focusing light onto the retina. And in order to do so, it needs to be transparent and it also needs to have a certain curvature. Um, and so the diseases I'll be talking about will impact on those two uh, functions of the cornea. So firstly, transparency. So um, if there is some sort of injury to the eye um, and uh, if there's some sort of uh, wound to the cornea, then uh, it could heal uh, with a scar. So if it penetrates deep enough, that it could lead to a scar. And depending on the location of the scar, uh, you may require corneal transplant. So basically what that looks like often you'll see if it's large enough to see, sometimes you do need a microscope, uh, quite a slit lamp by a microscope to see this, but um, you'll see like a gash. If it was a fingernail scratch, for example, you might see a, a kind of vertical uh, sort of gash on the cornea uh, that's kind of healed up and it's sort of like a white line. And that could happen potentially. Um, depending on the location, if it's central, it will re it potentially will require a corneal transplant. If it's off to the peripheral part of the cornea, maybe you're safe and you can still see fine. Um, the other thing is the corneal structure. So as we mentioned, uh, the curvature of the cornea is very important in order to refract or focus the light onto the retina. Uh, so one particular disease that affects the curvature of the eye is called keratoconus. And um, you probably heard the word cone in that, keratoconus. 
So uh, that's an easy way to remember what happens to the cornea. It gets cone shaped. So instead of being uh, sort of slightly curved, the uh, eyes with curved conus have a cornea that's almost like a cone. It's really pointy. Uh, so you can imagine that when light hits something that's not meant to be this shape, it's not going to bend the right way. So the light won't focus onto the retina and therefore the patient can't see. And so uh, this condition uh, is, is easily treatable depending on how severe it is. Um, so if it's quite mild, it's easily treatable with um, glasses or contact lenses. If it gets a bit more severe, then uh, you may require rigid contact lenses and that creates like a whole new surface for the eye to bend that light for because it's a rigid, um, really sturdy piece of um, material there that allows the light to bend upon that rigid surface rather than onto that cone-shaped surface. Um, and if it gets really severe, sometimes keratoconus can require um, surgery and um, that that is quite severe cases of um, keratoconus. One thing that actually accelerates the progression of keratoconus, and it's really important to remember this, is eye rubbing. And often people with keratoconus have really itchy eyes and they'll do this thing called knuckle rubbing where they really get in there and really rub their eyes. And that is terrible and uh, that's a really important thing to remind patients with keratoconus about is don't rub your eyes at any, any cost because that's gonna accelerate that cone-shaped um, uh, structure of the eye and um, could potentially lead to more severe um, states of keratoconus. And finally, another disease that affects the cornea is dry eye disease. And that's a um, really common uh, condition because we're always in air-conditioned environments, we're always um, pretty much glued to our phones and computer screens these days. Uh, so that can lead to um, a problem uh, called computer vision syndrome. And one element of that is dry eye disease. And pretty much like when we blink our eyes, every time we blink our eyes, we pretty much have like a, a standard blink rate. And every time we blink our eyes, we're actually refreshing the ocular surface. So the surface of our eyes uh, has this tear layer and it, that tear la layer is critical um, for uh, preventing dry eye disease. And it has to, uh, that tear layer also has a lot of components to it. And the tear layer sits um, in front of the cornea. So you can imagine if there's little dry patches in that tear layer, then the cornea is not being lubricated. And if it isn't, then those dry patches can lead to um, dry patches on the cornea. You can lose little cells called epithelial cells, corneal epithelial cells. And that is uh, quite a common condition. And uh, the treatment for it is quite simple. It, um, it involves environmental changes. So, you know, not having an air conditioner blowing straight out your eyes, um, ensuring that you do blink at a, a normal rate, uh, which is sometimes hard to remember if you're really focused on your work. And another one is um, lubricating eye drops, which you can get from the pharmacy. And this is different types, but oftentimes um, I would recommend the uh, non-preserved type because um, those are like single dose ones that um, they don't have the preservative because sometimes the preservative can actually impact on the uh, ocular surface and cause a little bit of dry patches as well. So that's possible. Um, and those are some of the diseases uh, that can impact on the cornea. Uh, there are um, many, many others. Um, they're a little bit um, more rare. There can be dystrophies, genetic disorders that impact on the cornea. Uh, infections as well uh, and you can look into that more um, but those are just a couple of ones to get you started just to understand a bit more about the cornea okay thanks for tuning in thank you so much daisy for explaining keratocona so brilliantly daisy is a postdoctoral research fellow at harvard medical school go follow her on instagram and twitter at i daisy shoe and thank you for watching this video if you have any questions related to the video or any other topic, let us know in the comments. Stay curious, ask questions, and happy sciencing.